Well, tonight at 10, new developments in a Carol Avenue's investigation. Could your tax, do tax dollars be paying for big bonuses based on falsified records? That's what A.J. Legault is exposing tonight as he continues to dig into the local Veterans Administration, and he has more on that. A.J.? Yeah, Carol Levin News has learned that the FBI has already started interviewing whistleblowers who claim that patient records were falsified to cover up life-threatening delays. The question now, were some top VA officials here and across the country raking in big cash bonuses based on those phony numbers? He died while the Minneapolis VA made him wait to see his doctor. 70 days just is too long. And adding insult to not just injury, but death, VA records claim Marine Corporal Jordan Beisman contacted them from the grave to ask for a further delay. Beisman had epilepsy and was suffering from seizures. His last would be fatal. An independent expert says Beisman could have been saved if he'd been seen more expeditiously. I think it's shameful that people have cooked the books and done other things to not serve veterans. Since our report on Jordan Beisman's death first aired, there's been a national outcry. And we are not going to stop. From veterans groups stop, to Congress. Corporal Beisman and listening to his mother, it, it'll break your heart, uh, as it should. And, and it shouldn't, uh, it doesn't have to be this way. This way. A way that, according to the VA's own memos, includes cooking the books by canceling appointments and falsely claiming it was done at veterans like Jordan Beisman's request all in order to create a false impression of quality, timely health care for veterans. He was only 25 years old. He deserved to live his life. How did it get this way? VA whistleblowers sum it up in one word. Bonuses. Bonuses Congress felt were so extravagant they held a hearing on them in June. Uh, we're going to examine the outlandish bonus culture at the VA. The VA was awarding bonuses in part based on how well hospitals met scheduling standards. The standard used to be 30 days to get a veteran a medical appointment. In 2011, that standard was shortened to 14 days. And that's when the train seems to have left the tracks. In late June, White House staff presented President Obama this report detailing the VA's corrosive culture. The report says the 14-day scheduling standard may have incentivized inappropriate actions. May have? It's more and more and more about numbers, numbers, numbers. Try definitely did, says former Minneapolis VA employees. Numbers is all that really counts, not the veterans' lives. Patients became numbers, and numbers translate to dollars in the pocket. According to VA's own data, over $2.8 million was paid out in performance awards to senior executives for FY13. That's just last year. Care 11 obtained VA data for the past seven years and found nearly $23 million in bonuses paid to top executives. But now the question is, how much of that was awarded based on manipulated data? We were being instructed to manipulate and continue the manipulation. And so who made the most in bonuses? Here in Minnesota, no one comes close to this woman. So I'm Jan Murphy, and I'm the direct network director for the VA Midwest Healthcare Network. Janet Murphy oversees VA hospitals across the Midwest, from regional headquarters in the Twin Cities. And I am accountable for what happens in this network. On top of her $176,000 a year salary, She's made $99,465 in bonuses since 07. And $100,000 um, as a bonus to retain someone who's not seeing uh, veterans, uh, you find somebody to me who can justify that. We wanted to let Murphy justify it. At a recent VA town hall meeting, she said this. Uh, I talk to anybody who calls me. But when we called, Janet Murphy, please. We were told she was not available and would likely not be available at any point to talk with us. The former Minneapolis VA director, Stephen Kleinglass, was another recipient of big bonuses. He was paid a salary of $180,000 a year, and from 2007 to 2010, he received $76,000 in bonuses. He retired at the end of 2011 and was given an additional award of nearly sixty-three grand. And the VA is continuously saying, we need more money. We need more money for more doctors. We need more money for more nurses. We need money for computers. 
you got money. The House Committee on Veterans Affairs provided us with figures showing the VA awarded to all of its employees more than $278 million in bonuses and various incentives in 2013 alone. If those bonuses uh, were given out, taxpayer money, under false pretenses, when in fact records were being doctored or wasn't true, uh, I don't think that's right. Senator Klobuchar is now the co-sponsor on legislation receiving strong bipartisan support to make VA employees who receive bonuses pay them back if it's shown they contributed to falsifying waitlist records. We're going to have to get that money back if it's proven that they did that. While some of the bonuses may end up being paid back, what can't be given back is the days and weeks and months veterans have been forced to wait for care. Some of them, like Jordan Beisman, couldn't wait. I miss hearing his voice. Long enough. Sorry. <laughs> In one of his last actions before resigning under fire, former VA Secretary Eric Shinseki suspended the awarding of bonuses for 2014 and ordered that patient wait times no longer be a part of employee performance reviews. Julie. Well, we did talk about the former Minneapolis VA director and his bonus. The current director, was it suspended before he was able to receive a bonus? Well, yeah, he actually has not received any bonus. Patrick Kelly is the current director over at the Minneapolis VA. He was appointed in June of 2013, and there's no record that he's received any of the performance bonuses that are now in question. I can tell you this, right before I walked in here on set, I learned that the FBI will be interviewing additional Minneapolis VA employees tomorrow. All right. Well, we know you're staying on top of it.